I'm like, oh, hot and sweaty and shit. Uh, I don't know what the fuck to say. I hate this already. I hate this so much. I hate you. In the beginning of the pandemic, when people were losing their minds for sourdough bread, I was losing my mind on trying to perfect the whiskey sour. Subsequently, I've somehow developed a citrus allergy. So now that I can't perfect the whiskey sour, might as well start a YouTube. My son has wanted to go to Great Sand Dunes National Park forever. He's seen my pictures and he's heard my stories. And all he's wanted to do is surf the dunes. We were lucky enough to find a long weekend right before school started to take the insanely boring 12-hour drive from Dallas to that part of Colorado, which is right where my son wants to be for 12 hours is stuck in a car with me. Um, but seriously, the drive from Dallas to that part of Colorado has got to be the worst drive in America. Nope, take that back. Austin, Texas to Albuquerque, New Mexico is the worst fucking drive in America. Let's go to Colorado. We were spent when we finally made it. This part of Colorado is remote, and honestly, there isn't shit there. The one and a half grocery stores close at 6 p.m. on a Wednesday. We made it at 5.50. The first morning I let Ethan sleep in, made myself some coffee and played with this random Colorado cat. When I travel for personal projects, I'd much rather stay in a place like this than some hotel. It may not look like much, but the people who call places like this home are some of the most genuine, down-to-earth people you could ever imagine meeting. Places like this have character. They've got soul. You're so white. <laughs> so white. When we headed out for the park, I thought it would be a good idea to bring my large format camera that I've only ever used once before to the sand dunes. And fuck me, what a mistake. 
this camera is so big that it comes in a trunk. After, I don't know, about 100 yards, I was deeply regretting my choice in bringing this camera, carrying it barefoot in sand at about 8,000 feet elevation. It felt like my fucking lungs were collapsing, but not wanting to look like a total bitch in front of my kid. <laughs> Carried on. Found a pretty good spot. Hastily set up a tent, which only made things worse later. And uh, fired off a few shots. I actually don't know how this double exposure happened. When you shoot a roll of 120 on 645, you get 16 frames. When I got the roll back from the lab, there were 16 frames. And I don't remember ever turning my camera for this shot. I still kind of like it. The one thing my kid wanted to do was surf the dunes. That's literally the only reason he came on this trip. <laughs> but when you get there and start to notice that everyone else's boards don't look anything like yours and it's not because they're blue or whatever but because they're all using snowboards and you've got a boogie board made for water <laughs> i felt like such an asshole i mean ethan may have well been surfing on velcro Yeah, it's crazy hot. The other mistake I made was thinking it'd be a good idea to leave our shoes in the car. We found the perfect parking spot right next to the entrance, covered in sand. It was only like 75 degrees, but when you're packing so much heavy shit, that sand gets real hot real fucking fast. When Ethan and I realized that the dunes were kind of a bust, we both had the realization that one of us was gonna have to go back to get our shoes. <laughs> Bless his little heart. This is one of those places that you could revisit forever and always discover something new, or at least see things a little differently. I like to revisit places or subjects that somehow stuck out to me. So much can change with the subject itself, the environment, my perception of it, the time of day, the time of year, what film stock I decided to shoot that day. To me, it's kind of like Monet's haystacks. On a trip a year earlier, I had seen this old dead tree on the side of the road, and I knew that I was going to have to come back to it on my next trip.
There are actually a few of those on this trip. The photo on the left was taken almost a year earlier, same time of day, pretty much the same Kodak stock too. Props to Ethan with the camera work. He's probably hoping for that YouTube money we are never going to see. This is another one, almost a year apart, same time of day, same stock. On my last trip here, I found this old house or school or whatever it used to be on the side of the road. One of the real bummers of this trip was the wildfire smoke that had blown in from California and Oregon. It obscured everything and created this kind of warm, hazy glow. Behind this building, you'd normally be seeing mountains. I'm not afraid of hopping a fence to get a shot, but I'm not up for getting stung or bit. And I shit you not, everything in this brush sounded like a rattle. This is another one, shot about eight months apart, same stock. Again, everything out here sounded like it was about to sink its fucking fangs into me. There are a few film stocks that I just, I don't know, we just don't get along. I've never been able to get Cinestill to look good and I don't want to take a photo of some random ass gas station at night. The other stock I struggle with is Ilford. I just, I don't get it. Every other roll of film came back from the lab perfect, but this roll looked like it had fucking leprosy. And there's no way in hell I'm spending my time touching out all of these spots. You ever get, you know those things that get stuck in dog hair? My dumbass chose to stand on an anthill. One of the things I love about rural areas like this is they're littered with little treasures like this old truck in someone's field. Before we left for Colorado, when I thought it was a good idea to bring my large format camera, I loaded up four sheets of film, but I only took two pictures at the dunes, and I wasn't going home with two unspent sheets of film. So much to Ethan's dismay, <laughs> I put my itchy ass jacket on him and made him stand on the log so I could take his picture. One thing I've tried, or I'm trying to make a very concerted effort to do, is to take more pictures of the two of us, because there aren't that many that exist. I hate having my picture taken just as much as I hate being on camera talking to you. Since I shoot all my personal work on film, well, I mean, none of my film cameras have self-timers. And since my 12-inch cable release wasn't going to cut it, I had to buy a 20-foot cable release. Once I got Ethan all framed up and in focus, I had to sprint back to him because his happy ass was dancing around with it. Itchy jacket on. Thought this shot turned out okay.
Colorado makes some pretty good whiskey, by the way. Like I mentioned earlier, one of the reasons I love places like this are the people who call it home. Our host was awesome. She gave us eggs, made us pasta. The house we stayed in, actually, she told me stories about how she helped build when she was a kid using mud and sticks and water that they would collect from the creek. I convinced her to let me take her portrait, and it's one of my favorite of the trip. Since this trip really wasn't panning out the way either one of us had hoped it would, I mean, you can kind of tell when your kid just isn't feeling it. I gave him the option and he chose to cut out a day early. We got up early the next morning and started the long drive home. The salt in the wound is that when we woke up, all of the wildfire smoke had cleared. <laughs> it was fucking gorgeous. Ethan may or may not have driven across the entire state of New Mexico, but there's no proof. Third on the list of revisits is this day ranch building on the side of the road in the middle of BF Nowhere, New Mexico. On my last stop eight months prior, I didn't hop the fence, but I also couldn't avoid the power lines in the frame. When I got the film back, I didn't love it, but I also didn't not love it. One of the last stops was this little one stoplight town in the middle of nowhere, Texas, called Chilla, Chillicoth? Chillicothe? Chilla, whatever. I'd driven through this town so many times that I'd been tempted to take one of these little seats that looks like an old movie theater chair because I've never seen a single person in this town. This is one of those sketchy watch where you step so you don't get tetanus kind of places. While I was taking these few frames, Ethan wandered off in search of, I don't know, hobos or something. But he apparently found a room full of spoons. The actual last stop were these massive wind turbines that kind of pepper the West Texas landscape. Kind of like the way that these middle finger sized grasshoppers were peppering me as I was trying to take these shots. Now that I've taken a photo of a wind turbine, I never have to take another photo of a wind turbine in my life. They're cool to see as you drive past, but not so much when you get your film back from the lab. And I lied, I think I have a wind turbine picture in my next video. Oh my god, I fucking hate this. <laughs>